I was sitting here wondering to myself, when is the next Petty Pendergrass production gonna come? I felt like I had deprived my loyal subscribers of one of these wonderful commentaries for such a long time, mainly because there wasn't any story to come across that was actually worthy of giving a Petty Pendergrass production to. Until one of my loyal subscribers actually came across my way, shout out to Adrian Thomas, and sent me this wonderful story coming from Vice involving Milo Yiannopoulos, AKA Tinker Bitch, in which the title reads, Milo Yiannopoulos says he's broke. That put a smile on my face, and as you can tell by Milo right here, he is sick. <laughs> oh, let me go ahead and read this article. And it starts off after the title. I can't put foot I can't put food on the table this way. Silicon Valley appears to have blown up Milo Yiannopoulos' business model. The disgraced right-wing troll is complaining that the major social media companies have effectively cut off his alt-right audience and crushed his ability to make a decent living. The former Breitbart tech writer shared the complaints on Telegram, a messaging app where some alt-right allies have set up shop after getting the boot by larger tech platforms. Yiannopoulos was banned from Twitter in 2016 for directing racist abuse at the comedian Leslie Jones, losing, losing nearly 400,000 followers. He was banned from Facebook in May. I spent years growing and developing and investing in my fan base and they just took it all away in a flash, wrote Yiannopoulos, who previously rubbed shoulders with neo-Nazis and white nationalists. It's nice to have a little private chat with my gold star homies, but I can't make a career out of a handful of people like that. I can't put food on the table this way. The provocateur made no mention of the harassment that landed him in social media jail, nor did he touch on being forced out of Breitbart the following year after he made comments that seemed to endorse pedophilia. While Telegram allows Yiannopoulos to share such important commentary with more than 19,000 followers directly, it does not offer him the mass reach of Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. The same goes for Gab and other social networks set up in protest of Big Tech's increasingly aggressive content moderation efforts. I can't find anyone who's managing to grow a really big channel here, wrote Yiannopoulos, whose Telegram posts typically reach around 2,000 pairs of eyeballs. Everyone is hitting a wall. There's no future to Telegram for social media refugees if this is the best it gets. The rant offers some hope to progressive activists who push tech companies to take a harder line against users who traffic in hate speech. A gaggle of right-wing commentators turn in such incendiary content into cold hard cash parlaying engaged social media audiences into speaking gigs, book deals, or direct contributions from fans through services like Patreon. Efforts to regulate that cottage industry have backfired in some cases. In June, YouTube's bungled demonetization of channel run by the conservative comedian Steven Crowder whose obsessively bullied Vox journalist Carlos Maza drew calls of censorship from across right-wing political media. The outcry helped Crowder amass legions of new followers and paying subscribers. The more comprehensive deplatforming of Yiannopoulos, however, appears to have torpedoed the economics driving his whole operation. And it's possible he may not be the only one. The pro-Trump con artist Jacob Wall, who was banned from Twitter for operating fake accounts earlier this year, reshared the thread with a simple comment, I agree with all of this. Yiannopoulos laid blame not only on big tech countermeasures, but also the pro-Trump internet's inability to, inability to successfully strike back. I'm clinging on for dear life and I'll never give up, said Yiannopoulos, who did not immediately respond to Vice News direct message seeking comment. But holy fucking hell, the base in America sucks and he put that in all caps. Frankly, they deserve to lose their country, and if by some miracle we manage to save it, it'd be no thanks whatsoever to voters, readers, subscribers, and entirely, which he also wrote in all caps, thanks to the few brave souls battling on the front lines beyond all reason and hope. It's years too late, he added. The time to act was when I got booted off Twitter and nobody did. Well, Tinker Bitch, let me put it to you plainly. You made all this noise for all this time, you worked for Breitbart, they kicked you out. You kept going to Silicon Valley, well, you know, in other places over there, they booted you. You wanna know what it is? 
even though you were this right wing extremist individual type of person, you weren't really interesting. You, you, it's almost like every day for you, you were just an attention seeker like many of your ilk. But then tack onto the fact that you are also a member of the LGBT community. That's something that they probably didn't want or another element that they did not want in that route and you kept trying to be this leader but you just kept bringing more bad attention to yourself and that whole pedophilia thing too did not help remember when he tried to start that um that boys program or something like that when he did that i said i know exactly what he's trying to do that just screams pedophile ring to me and they shut that thing down with the quickness which i'm glad they did because if that had kept on going he probably could have started Nambla 2.0 with that whole situation i don't feel anything for people like milo yiannopoulos aka tinker bitch i have had nothing more than disdain for this individual ever since i first found out about him when i had my original channel so I'm actually glad and I am overjoyed that this is happening with him. The last time I talked about a person of his ilk that said they were broke was Richard Spencer. Remember, he said he couldn't even afford a $5 shot of bourbon. I will never forget that. But see, they have so much hate in their hearts that they would rather be broke, busted and disgusted then actually garner i don't know some type of wealth and richard spencer he's really a waste because didn't his family steal land from black farmers or something like that that was worth like two million dollars and he's still flat broke like that's just a waste of whiteness right there and milo yiannopoulos aka tinker bitch is no different because I'm sure he comes from a privileged background as well. I can just look at him and tell and just smell the privilege just ooze out of him. But that's what he gets. I feel absolutely nothing. I'm sure you don't as well. This has been another edition of Petty Pendergrass Production. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments. And I will talk to you in the next one.